Have you ever considered the question, what is the greatest gift we have ever received? What would you say is the greatest gift that you have ever received? For me, it's very clear what the answer is. It's self-awareness. The greatest gift I have ever received is self-awareness. Because if I didn't have self-awareness, there wouldn't be anything else. There wouldn't be any kind of experience. I wouldn't really exist. I wouldn't be conscious. I wouldn't be aware of myself, my surroundings, and the relationship between me and the environment I'm in. Now, I know a lot of people will say that self-awareness isn't a gift, it's a curse. Because it's what makes you suffer. It's what makes you miserable, feel ashamed, feel afraid, feel this, feel that. But if you think this way, it's because you haven't come to one fundamental realization about self-awareness. There is a fundamental difference between awareness and the contents of awareness. Right now, you are having a specific experience, a specific life experience. And you are probably focused on the specifics of that life experience. And it's understandable that those specifics might cause you to have a not so positive experience. You might experience life as suffering. You might experience life as a struggle. I'm not trying to belittle this. I'm not trying to belittle people's experiences or to make light of the fact that many people are suffering. I'm just saying that if you look at spiritual teachings given throughout the ages and given today as well, the central message of all spiritual teachings, if you really boil it down, it is that there is a difference between awareness and the contents of awareness. There's a difference between the, the fact that you are conscious and then what you are conscious of. And it's, it's really, well, I can illustrate it in a very simple way. Right now, I'm just looking with my eyes. And I'm just seeing whatever is there in my environment. So this is, in a sense, self-awareness. In its pure form, this is just awareness. But now... I'm experiencing the way most people experience life. I put some colored glasses on. My eyes are still seeing. It's still seeing the same objects in the room where I'm sitting. But everything is now colored. And it is that coloring that determines the life experience I'm having. Of course, what determines our life experience is much more complex than just putting on a pair of colored glasses that color the light in a certain way. It's a very complex apparatus we have in our subconscious minds. But nevertheless, the essence of all spiritual teachings is the specifics of the life experience you have is determined by the contents of your consciousness. It's colored by the contents of your consciousness. But you can change those contents. And why can you change the contents? Because you have self-awareness. Think about a cow that's lying in the field chewing the cut. A cow can't decide one day, I'm fed up with lying here chewing. I want to be a horse running free. Why can't the cow do this? You must say a cow has some awareness. 
You can interact with a cow in certain ways, as you can with many animals. But they don't have self-awareness. They can't step back mentally, look at themselves and say, I want to change myself. I want to consciously change myself. And this is what we can do as human beings. And the reason we can do this is we have self-awareness. We can come, become aware that we exist. We can become aware that we are a self. But that the self itself has no form. The core of our beings, I have called it in several videos, the conscious you. I've said it's pure awareness, it's neutral awareness. Because when we connect to that, when we become conscious of the core of our beings, we're just experiencing the world. We don't have a specific experience. It's like we are just looking with neutral eyes. But as I also explained, we have in our subconscious minds, we have all of these selves that we have created. And the selves, they are the ones who have a specific view of the world, a specific coloring. So the conscious you has the ability to experience itself as pure awareness, or it can go into a specific self, which is like doing this. And now I'm experiencing that the world is colored by these glasses, which is just an illustration of one of these subconscious selves. So that's why self-awareness is the greatest gift. It's not a curse. It's an opportunity to have experiences. Now, how did we create these subconscious selves that we have? Well, many of them we created in reaction to planet Earth. And I understand, and I've talked about this in several videos, that uh, planet Earth is a very difficult planet. It's what I call an unnatural planet because there's all this conflict between people. And the conflict comes from the fact that all people have these subconscious selves. They are not aware that these are subconscious selves. They are not aware that the subconscious selves are based on an illusion. So, as I've explained in my talk about the duality consciousness, when we step into, when the conscious you steps into these subconscious selves, you're experiencing that the self is coloring your view of the world, your experience of the world, your life experience, but you don't see that this is a self. You think this is how the world is. And as I've experienced in se uh, explained in several videos, we can consider the Earth to be a device like a reality simulator. So the Earth has a certain environment. And of course, you can look at the Earth and see there are many different kinds of environments. Some people live way, way, way out in rural areas, hardly connected to civilization. Other people live in very dense cities, and there are different cities with different levels of uh, ways of living, different living standards. So just from the physical, we can see there are many different uh, environments that people can experience. But still, if you step back, you know, we are all on the same planet. And yet you can see that people have many, many different life experiences. You can even see people who live in the same physical environment, but they still have different life experiences. So why is that? It's because these people have different subconscious selves that color their life experience. Now, if you step really step back and say, well, what is planet Earth? Well, as I said, it's a reality simulator. It's a device that's programmed to give people 
any experience they want within certain parameters. I mean, there are certain parameters, you know, the physical nature of the planet, gravity, and all kinds of things like that. But within those parameters, people can have any experience they want. And they can feel that the experience they're having is real. They're experiencing a real world. So as I've explained in my non-duality talk, especially the one about how you get out of the duality consciousness, you realize that every person has a particular experience. That experience is colored by a subconscious self which is based on an illusion, especially when people go into duality and separation. But each person experiences that this is not just a world view or a separate self they have taken on. It's the way the world is. And because you have many different people who have different world views, but they're each convinced that it's real, that's why we have conflict. Because when people think a relative worldview is reality, they feel threatened by those who don't sh share their worldview or perhaps even have an opposite worldview. And that's why conflict arises. But this is not a product of self-awareness. It's actually a product of not exercising your self-awareness, not being aware of who you are and what you are. Because as I've also explained, in reality, we are all extensions of the one mind. There is only one mind. Before there was any kind of form, there was one mind, and all form, including us, was created out of the one mind. So we all came from the same source. But we were given self-awareness and free will. And that means that we are here we are, you know, the core of our beings is the conscious you. But the conscious you is meant to express itself, to experience its environment through a specific sense of self. And we start out with this very localized sense of self. And our potential is to expand that sense of self. And in order to do this, we are given free will. So we are allowed to create any kind of subconscious self we want to create, then go into that self and experience the world through that self. In other words, we are meant to simply experiment, have different life experiences, and then we decide, have I had enough of this particular life experience I'm having? And if we decide we've had enough, then the conscious you has the ability, because it has self-awareness, to step outside the self Look at the self and say, why am I having the experience I'm having? It's because I have a particular self that colors my experience. I have glasses of a specific color that I put on. But I can take off those glasses. I can uncreate the self that I currently experience the world through and why? Because I created that self. It may have been in a past lifetime where you don't remember it, but still you created it by coming to accept a certain illusion that you are a separate being, for example. And so that's why the self-awareness isn't a curse, because self-awareness is what gives you the potential to become aware that your current life experience isn't the only possible life experience. And that you can also become aware that you are not the self that is giving you your current life experience. You created it. You have stepped into it. The conscious you has stepped into that self, but you haven't become the self. And that means as you stepped into it, you can step out of it. And when you come to see that it's just a self, when you come to see it's based on an illusion, you can let it die. You can let it go. And you can say, 
I want a higher life experience than this. And so planet Earth is really like a theater. There are different roles in the theater. And you can say, I want to play this role for a while. Then you want to play another role. But you can also come to a point where you've had enough of playing the kind of roles that can be played on Earth. And that's really when people start becoming open to the spiritual path. That's when they go into, as I said before, in the reality simulator, there are two basic experiences. There's the immersion phase, where we are totally immersed in experiencing Earth. We think it's a real world, and we think that our way of experiencing it is the only real one. Or we can go into the awakening phase, where we start not only questioning the specific experiences we have, but we start questioning the sense of reality that those selves are giving us. And we come to see that, but this wasn't the only way. It wasn't the real world I was seeing through this self. It was just a particular view. It was just a pair of glasses I put on. But the, So you see that the reason why we can do all of this is that we have self-awareness. You can go into any kind of role and experience what it's like to play that role for a while, but you can always go out of it again. And by going into the role, you are expanding your sense of self. You are getting experiences with the environment you are in, and you are expanding your sense of self. Especially when you then awaken from this immersion phase and come to see that nothing on earth defines you. And when you realize that nothing on earth defines you, you can make peace with being here. You can say, well, it's the planet is what it is. I can have these kind of experiences on it. And I've had enough of having the struggle experience. I want to have a positive life-affirming, life-supporting experience of Earth. But in order to do this, you have to reconnect to the fact that you, the conscious you, you are neutral awareness. Meaning you don't have to experience life based on what I call the duality consciousness that always has the two opposite polarities, good and bad, right and wrong, this should happen, this shouldn't happen. And it gives you a whole different way of interacting with life, where you are not suffering. So all I'm saying here is that I understand that many people experience life as suffering. And in a sense, you can say it's because we have self-awareness that we are able to create these selves that cause us to experience life as suffering. That's true. But nobody forced us to create those kind of selves. And it wasn't wrong to create those kind of selves. It was just one of the experiences we can have on a planet like Earth as it currently is. So whatever we have had of experiences through these separate selves, it's just an experience. And because we have self-awareness, we can step outside of that self, step away from the experience, and we can gain a different perspective on it. We can realize, well, it wasn't the only way to experience Earth, but it wasn't ultimately real either. What we experienced through that self wasn't real. It was just one way to look at it. And by doing this, we gain a much broader perspective than if we had not gone into that experience. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's like when you're looking at it from inside a separate self, it, it seems like, you know, you are forced to be in the situation you're in. Of all these outer circumstances are forcing you to have the experience you're having. When you step outside and realize that you are con the conscious you, your neutral awareness, you realize you were not forced. It was just an experience you took on. It's like going into the theater and say, I want to play this, kind of, this character, this role in, in the play. But you can at any time wake up from that role and go out of it again. It takes a process, 
I admit, and I've described that process in several of my videos. But it's not something you were forced to do, and it's not something that was wrong to do it. It's like, you know, if, if you look at what I've said about the duality consciousness, it's the duality consciousness that gives us this ability to experience something as right or wrong, good or bad. But this is just part of the experience we can have on Earth, where everything is good or bad, something should happen, something shouldn't happen, and when it doesn't happen what we want, then we suffer. It's just an experience that comes from the duality consciousness. But we don't have to experience life on Earth through the duality consciousness. We can step outside of it and realize that it's not right or wrong, good or bad, it just is what it is. And it can be turned into a positive experience. We are just experiencing this. And I admit that, you know, <laughs> I understand that there are many, many people who are experiencing very difficult physical circumstances. I understand that. I'm not trying to make light of it. I'm not trying to brush away people's suffering. But I'm just saying, for you as a spiritual person, and you wouldn't be listening to this if you weren't a spiritual person, then it's a matter of coming to that awareness that whatever experience I have had up until this point, I can transcend it. I can step outside of it. And you may, up until this point, have felt that you were forced by outer circumstances to have the experience you are having. And I understand this. I have met many, many people on the spiritual path who had very difficult life circumstances, much more difficult than I've had. So I understand you can feel that way. But it is still just an experience. And you can step outside of it, look at it, come to see that it was because there was this self you had taken on. And it's not who you are. You ha it doesn't define you. You haven't become the self. It's just coloring your experience. And you can let that self die, and therefore you can be free to have a different experience. And that's the whole essence of the spiritual path, is to be able to change your life experience here on Earth. And then eventually come to a point where you say, okay, I've had enough of the kind of life experience you can have in this reality simulator. I want to either go to another simulator or I want to ascend beyond the level of simulation, which is the ascended realm. So, if you think about this more deeply, and it might take a little bit of contemplation, I'm not saying this was something that happened to me in five minutes, but it, it took some time, but I eventually realized that the, the experience that we are forced by outer circumstances to have a certain inner experience, that in itself is just one of the experiences we can have on Earth. And it's a very persistent experience. We probably could say that 98% of the people on Earth are having that kind of an experience, where their state of mind, the way they experience life, is determined by external circumstances. That's how probably 98% of the people on Earth uh, think. But you're not a spiritual person because you're like the other 98%. If you were like them, you would not be open to the spiritual path. So, what I'm saying is, when you come to this awareness, you can realize that this is just the most common experience on Earth, but it's not the only one. It's not the only way to experience life. And this is, again, self-awareness, the gift of self-awareness. You are not condemned to have the experience you are having right now or the experience you've had up until this point. You're not condemned to continue to have that indefinitely. But this requires you to do something that most people in the world are not willing to do. 
It requires you to, to accept responsibility that you can change your life experience. You can consciously and deliberately change your life experience. And I've described in several of my videos how you do this with these subconscious selves and how you overcome them. And the, the only way to really do this, I think, yes, you can understand it intellectually, but the only way to really do this is to realize that you have already had these experiences where you step outside your normal sense of self. Because if you hadn't had some intuitive mystical experience, you wouldn't be open to the spiritual path. And so it's a matter of becoming aware that you can have these experiences where you're experiencing awareness itself, consciousness itself in its pure form. And you realize that you can be aware without being totally focused on your normal thoughts and feelings. Most of the time we're just focused on whatever thoughts and feelings are coming up in our minds. But a mystical, intuitive experience is when we step back and suddenly we just experience being aware without being focused on the contents of awareness. And it's that experience that's the foundation for coming to this realization with the outer mind that I am not a product of the specifics of my experience. I am more than the specifics of the experience. And that's why I can change the contents of my experience. I can consciously and deliberately choose to have a different experience. But see, the trick is, you can't do this by just switching your mind. There are many, many teachings out there that talk about, oh, just adopt a positive mental attitude, or just go into this state of receiving, or just uh, switch into a state of no self, or whatever. No. And you can, you can make yourself think that you are doing this. But the only real way to do it is to look at these subconscious selves and dissolve them, one at a time. Because then the change becomes permanent. What I'm saying here is, if you really understand this, this is the really key to being successful on the spiritual path. Because what have I said so far? I have said, we can have any experience we want here on earth. But how do we have an experience? By creating a self, stepping into it and experiencing life through that filter. But once we have created a self, it goes into the subconscious mind and we forget that we created it. But it's still there. It, even as I explained, it takes on a certain life of its own because it has a certain rudimentary state of consciousness. It wants to pull you into whatever reaction uh, the self was created to do. And it's pulling on the conscious you to come inside here, come in and experience life through me. So here we are, we have these subconscious cells we created, right? And they cause us to feel that we are suffering. Now we find this spiritual teaching that says, Oh, your suffering is unreal. It's just a dream. Every, you're just dreaming everything because there is no, no one here. And you just need to switch into this no self and your suffering will go away. And you can do this. People can do this. But what are they doing when they're doing this? They're creating a new self. A new self. They don't, they don't realize they're creating it. But when they step inside of it, it gives them a certain experience. Oh yes, I've overcome the state of self. I have no self. I'm not suffering. The problem is, all of the previous selves are still in the subconscious mind. So now you have created a self to suppress the other selves. And as long as you have enough awareness and attention and energy, mental, psychic energy, you can, for a while, suppress these other selves. And so it becomes a strain. And 
sooner or later, you can't do it anymore. And now one of these other selves you have is going to pop its head up and say, I'm still here. You need to come and experience life the way you used to. And you're going to be pulled in different directions. And why is that? It's because you haven't exercised the greatest gift you have, self-awareness. You have created selves that cause you to suffer, and now from inside of those selves, from inside the sense of suffering, you're saying, I want to get away from suffering. Then you hear this teaching about non-duality or um, manifestation or this or that, positive mental attitude. Now you create another self, but still from that consciousness of seeing yourself as a separate being. But the real way to overcome suffering is to step outside the self, look at the self and say, but you're just a self, you're not me. I haven't become you because I created you. And the fact that I created you means I can uncreate you. And this is the beauty of taking responsibility, where you say, I wasn't forced by circumstances. Or you can even say, well, maybe I was forced by circumstances because maybe I experienced such dramatic outer circumstances that anybody would have created a self based on these circumstances. But I am not forced to uphold that self for the rest of my life. I can step out of it and I can let it die. And <clears throat> that's self-awareness. That is the highest potential of self-awareness. We can go in and create any kind of self we want, but we can always go out of it again and uncreate the self, thereby consciously changing our life experience. Why, why would you have to suffer on Earth? Just because 98% of the people are suffering. Why do you have to suffer? You only suffer because you have a self that can only suffer. But that's because it's based on it, it, it is evaluation of right and wrong, good and bad, should happen, shouldn't happen. When you step outside of that consciousness, which the conscious you is capable of doing because you have self-awareness, then you can let go of it. You can change your life experience. It's just... I, I'm tempted to say it's just a switch of the mind, but I realize that then I'm sounding like all these non-dual teachers who are saying, oh, just switch out of the sense of self. It is a process, but it is a matter of at least coming to first consciously realize what is going on. And then you gradually start experimenting with the process of letting go of these selves. And if you're a spiritual person, you, you have already let go of some selves. You just didn't see it that way. You didn't describe it that way. But you have already come to a point where you said, I don't want to have this life experience anymore. That's why you accepted a spiritual teaching and a spiritual path and followed it. So I'm just saying, yeah, it's a matter of stepping up, becoming more conscious of the process, and perhaps even seeing that behind all specific uh, spiritual teachings out there is this universal process of overcoming these subconscious selves that color your experience. And instead of creating new selves, you can, you can dismantle the ones you have. And you can come to a point where you don't necessarily need to have any self. You don't need to experience, you certainly don't need to experience life through this duality consciousness where everything is good or bad, right or wrong. And it doesn't mean that there's nothing you want to do on earth. It doesn't mean that you have to go into this state where, oh, nothing matters. You know, you can still be engaged in life. You can still, for that matter, have selves that are not dualistic selves. They are just, I want to experience this while I'm on earth. I want to have this experience. 
And this can be part of your spiritual growth, part of your life plan, that you have these experiences and that you do certain things. So what you come to is this realization that the life experience you have had so far was the life experience you chose to have. Again, you know, I'm not trying to blame anybody. I'm not trying to say that there aren't very difficult circumstances. But ultimately, you chose to have life, that life experience because it was just one possible self you had, could create. And because you admit that you chose it, you can also unchoose it. You can choose something higher. If you don't admit that you chose it, if you think it was forced upon you, you're powerless. And being powerless is another experience that you can have on earth and that most people are having. But that's not the spiritual path. The spiritual path is taking back your power to shape your life experience. And why can you do this? Because you have self-awareness. And that is the greatest gift of all. What I really wanted to say with this video is that when I look back at my own life and the time I've been on a spiritual path, I have, of course, gone through the same stages I'm talking about, being totally immersed in my experience, thinking my experience was the, my inner experience was determined by outer circumstances. But what has happened as a result of walking the spiritual path is that I have come to that point where I can just feel grateful for being alive. And really, I'm grateful for having self-consciousness or self-awareness. And um, sometimes I just, I wake up in the morning, I'm not quite awake, my body is not really awake, but I'm lying there and I'm just feeling this, like waves of gratitude, wonder, awe, that I have self-awareness, that I'm aware, not only of myself, but I'm aware of this incredible creation we're living in. And I'm not so much with that, I don't so much necessarily mean Earth, because even the Earth, though the Earth has many beautiful aspects, uh, I'm more thinking about the greater cosmos, the not only the physical universe, but the spiritual realm. With all of the beings in the spiritual realm, the Ascended Masters that I experience and that I know so well. And you can just feel connected to this, to this, this incredible, I mean, tapestry of life that we are a part of. And it's like it, it takes me beyond whatever is happening on Earth. It, it goes way beyond the conditions here on this planet. You just tie into this <clears throat> immense creation we are part of. How incredibly complex it is, <clears throat> how incredibly beautiful it is, and you can, you can tie into the whole purpose behind it. And you can experience, you know, the conscious you can really experience that I'm part of this incredible creation that this one being, our creator, thought out in its mind and planned and executed, and we are co-creators, we are part of this unfolding tapestry of life. And it's just, it just sometimes fills me with such wonder and such gratitude just for being part of it. And that's because I have self-awareness and I can experience myself as a part of this greater self that the Creator is.